Hola, and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including OKKO, OK Let's Be Heroes, which we'll be getting into right now. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Alex Bonilla, and today I'm joined by Michelle Andrew. Hello. Steve Zek. Yo. And a special guest, Justin Cummings. How did I get here? <laughs> you got lost. What's going got on? Lost. <laughs> well, you got well, lost lo- in the uh, portal to the by the... Why? What's his name? The villain of the Nexus episode. Yeah, well, there's like, people like listening episode. who's like, "Who is this guy?" <laughs> I don't know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> like the episode we're about to discuss, he is a, a fragment of a bygone era in the, in, the, in our franchise. But here, here yeah. he is bygone but, because Steven Universe is on hiatus. Yeah, true. true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, t- today we are going to be discussing the latest uh, two episodes of OKKO, OK Crossover Nexus and Monster Party. Um, if you want to find discussion on previous OKKO OK episodes that we've talked about, you can find that at OverlyAnimated.com. You can also subscribe to our OKKO OK feed at on iTunes at OverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes. And you can also find us on YouTube at OverlyAnimated.com slash YouTube. But wherever you listen to us, we appreciate any ratings or reviews you want to leave us. <laughs> but yeah, we, we, we've got two big episodes to talk about since we last got together to talk about KKO. These are two special episodes in that they're both... Um, it, you OKKO OK always has had its uh, share of references to other genres and other shows, but like these episodes in particular are heavy on the crossover <laughs> spice, so we'll definitely have a lot to talk about there. <laughs> but we'll begin with just general impressions of how we feel about about the episodes. Um, Michelle, you, you, uh, let's so you go first. Uh, how, how do you feel about these two episodes? Did you have one better than the other? What stood out to you? I've been trying to think about that a lot in terms of ranking them, and I've decided it's not fair to rank them because they're while they're both reference heavy, one more than the other, they both are trying to accomplish very different goals. One's a very genre and holiday specific thing, and the other one's like this massive ambitious like like merging of four shows with a, a fairly cohesive plot and end goal. So I don't think it's fair to compare them. I think they're very good for what they are on their own terms. That having said crossover Nexus, I didn't know what to expect from this. I think we've been kind of wondering about it for a couple months. And when it finally came out, it was really not what I was expecting. And I really, really liked it. And I didn't know how much I needed Garnet and KO together. But the relationship was so good, and Garnet officially has two good boys to look after now. <laughs> and that's so perfect to me. So I think Crossover Nexus might be more memorable, but they're both, like, quality episodes on their own terms. Okay, okay. Um, J- Justin, uh, how, how did you feel in general about these two episodes? So uh, they're both really, really great. And I think, like Michelle said, they have different goals. Crossover Nexus is, like, not only to really have a good modern crossover, but also to celebrate the history of Cartoon Network. Whereas Monster Party is really a specific love letter to the, the one thing of ghoul school. And so in that regard, it's kind of hard to compare them because every single second of crossover Nexus is like, it's worth it to watch it frame by frame. Whereas Monster Party really only works as a whole. And so it's just so hard to rank them. Personally, I put Monster Party above just because Ghoul School means so much to me. But they're both incredible. Okay, okay. And, uh, and Steve? Oh, um, it's very hard to really rank them because I feel like M- Monster Monster Party, it feels more like a normal OKKO OK episode. While the Crossover mm-hmm. Nexus, it feels like an event. And it's really hard to rank that. Um um, I really enjoyed all the uh, callbacks to have crossover nexuses. I mean, those statues. Um, trying to look up who is who. I, I had to. I look up some research. I don't know as much of Cartoon Network's history as say Justin. Um, I did say one of the statues, the one on the very left. T- at first glance, it looks like either a mushroom or strawberry shortcake. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll we'll get into specifics later. But, yeah, later, but. but and yeah, and and I love Scooby Doo in the Ghoul School growing up. Um. So it's kind of cool to see that I when before the episode, before the episode even aired, I jokingly said reference Scooby Doo and the Ghoul School on a Discord, and I did not think they're seriously going to do that. I mean, one of my <laughs> little, yeah, and they got like three of the five original voice actresses back, so that's kind of cool. And 
Yeah, and but still, this is our third podcast in a row we've done that has an episode with no Dendi in it, so that's kind of a bummer. But <laughs> okay, okay, so but glad like, like the, Dendi watch. The, these three. episodes are special enough that I, maybe Dendi would have gotten swallowed three, up. So but all fun. three of our podcasts, so our, 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 our last three podcasts, I've had LED at least in some form, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, 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 just uh, my my quick take here. The cr- I I think I actually agree with Steve's assessment that like go- the monster party feels more like a classical KKO episode. Maybe par- partially because it's uh, like focused so much on Enid and like Enid is the classic character. But like crossover nets, is it does feel more like an event or like a, a thing kind of separate from OKKO. But like it's still really interesting to to watch through. Uh, I also am not as nostalgic. I don't have as much background to be nostalgic about a lot of these things, but at the same time, I do. I, I found the the relationship between Ko and Garnet especially to be interesting, and incorporating all the other parts of Cartoon Network history as background stuff like that. I think that they it infused it really well. And yeah, Monster Party is just like a, a fun Halloween episode that we'll talk a little bit about about stuff in there. But yeah, um, I think Crossover Nexus is the one that like has the most to pick apart and the uh, probably the most hype for an OKK episode in a long time, maybe mm-hmm. since like TKO, maybe. But like, uh, I guess uh, one place we can start, aside from it being uh, like full of references to things like is it a uh is it a fun episode to watch like if like if let's say that we knew nothing about cartoon network you're just going in as like a norm like a person like hey this is a cartoon i should watch it like would it be fun to watch is that is this assuming that we've not seen even like Ben 10, Teen Titans Go, and Steven Universe? Let's let's try working under that assumption. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hard, but okay. I think the Garnet KO thing carries it. Like, I think that it is, you pick up very, very quick what you need to know. They do the little introductions and they work well. I think it's, I think on its own it does work very well. Like, they got the pacing and character interactions so well that it definitely like it would be fun on its own okay and i i do think that's a good place to start with the garnet ko relationship because i i also uh, think that like that's the part that kind of sticks out the most of like the actual story of the episode uh, mm-hmm. obviously we we have connections to steven universe and so we see the garnet steven relationship is yeah. uh, very, it gets very maternal at times so seeing ko and garnet bond is like very cute i, I think uh, um, michelle you mentioned something about like the just the continuation of the cute boys or the, the, the good <laughs> or boys they're both her good boys steven and ko yeah uh, yeah uh, i feel yeah i feel definitely the garnet ko interaction is like the center of it i feel like Ben and Raven's appearance was just sort of thrown in. It's you can just get any other characters from CN have their roles, and it wouldn't really change much. But we needed Garnet in this episode more so than anyone else. Well, I would, okay, so, yeah, Michelle. I was gonna say. I mean, I I feel so when I was younger, Ben Ten came out at a time where I wasn't really like as invested as cartoons. Um, mm. But for my job, I've had to watch a lot of Ben 10. And I actually really like him in this style a lot more. I like his character design a lot oh, more. Yeah. And I like that Raven constantly is sarcastic when Ben is being <laughs> kind of cocky. Well, like, I love that dynamic. And that kind of sold it for me. Well, I feel that. Def- okay. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I feel Ben is definitely more likable in this reboot than he was in the original. So. I know you saw the original Ben 10 because he's not very likable in the first Ben 10 series. I believe okay. it. So what is what exactly did you like about ben, about Ben in this? Because like I couldn't I couldn't connect to Ben in this episode well, like, I mean, from the beginning to end. Comparatively, I really can't connect to Ben in mm. the current iteration of him. But he's like he's like a young boy, so that makes sense. But in this version, I feel like the other like I feel like Garnet Ko and especially Raven balanced his personality mm-hmm. out because he was the most cocky and the most kind of. N- not nice the way ko is like so nice mm-hmm. um so like i i liked that these were the three that were paired with him in a way ben is like the lars of this group 
Kind of. <laughs> not I, as bad as Lars. But <laughs> I think Lars the decision way. to leave Ben as forearms for most of the episode yeah. actually worked really great because yeah. he comes off as like the hulking idiot and plays that role so, so well. Like well, the line, like, I'm forearms and Ben and a whole <laughs> bunch and Garnet just like hand over the mouth. Uh, I, well, like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> And like in and that like, sense, is it kind of like an OKK okay episode? And they're like he's portraying the rad of this group. Uh, and I don't know rad's kinda, nicer. Is, the Enid. I don't know. I don't know. Like I'm rad's trying to nice. figure out if there's a parallel. Rad's nicer, here. but I've only uh, only time uh, reading Ben Ten interest for me is all the stuff with Charmcaster. Any Charmcaster episode? Okay, but there's no it, Charmcaster. I know. Here, I know. So, I'm just uh, saying Ben's yeah. not the selling point of that show for me. So, but I love Raven. She's like my favorite Teen Titan. In both versions, mm-hmm. the original and Teen Titans go, so that m- balanced it out. Very briefly, like, while we're meant- like oh, sorry, go for it. Sorry, <laughs> no, go for I, it. I liked Raven more in this this show style. Also, like, I feel like the KO team did a good job of handling these other properties, but also infusing them with the KO style of humor. Like they were much more cartoony than they are quite the same way in their respective shows normally. Mm-hmm. And I think that that played off really well for this event. Wait, I just thought, mm-hmm. so. I just realized you, you made a good point here. Ben is kind of like rat. Well, Ben, his, his main thing is turn to aliens and Raz an alien and Raven is magical. And that's like, Eden's like, uh, she's grown to be, she's like a witch. So, it, it okay, kind fine. of makes sense now. And I guess yeah, Garnet we... is Mr. Gar or some or Carol. I thought Garnet was the mom. There's a mom in the show, right? Oh, yeah! yeah Carol. Garnet is totally Carol! Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I like this alignment better. Okay, good, good job, yeah. Steve. The, um, yeah, Justin, were you going to mention something yeah, about... Speaking the... of the whole Ben 10 Raven thing, what's so mm-hmm. great, there's the line where K.O.'s asking, like, who said that? Like, K.O.'s adorable. I love him. He's like, Ben, was that you? And he just goes, does that really th- sound like me? Because Raven and Ben are both voiced by Tara Strong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, it doesn't work as forums. I think that's the point. But, like, just they, this episode is just so fantastic. Like, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> another r- little Raven piece I, I liked was, uh, like, KO is, like, asking a bunch of questions. And uh, Raven is just like, well, it's not, a d- not as dumb as Beast Boy. Yeah, still so, like, smarter than Beast Boy. <laughs> yeah, still smarter oh, than Beast so Boy. So, like, oh, they, they, oh. They, they try to bring in the references from other shows. Oh, and, so I and enjoyed that the, piece. And the ex on Raven's, like, mouth when we first see her, that's happened in an episode of the original show, the, uh, the Mask episode with Red X. Yeah, that was like a red X mat, like X. I, I yeah. noticed that too. It was <laughs> grab onto my super strong legs. Okay, that was a really good <laughs> well, line. And also, because uh, I, I was thinking about um, forearms like line delivery also, and that moment when Garnet saves them, and Raven's like, "Thanks, Garnet," and he's like, "Yeah, thanks, Garnet." Like his deadpan way of saying that was just—it gets me every time. It's so funny. It's such a good delivery. Well, um, we also briefly made reference to the Etzes, and that that is coming from the villain of this uh, of this episode. Um, he's called is he called Strike. Striker or Red Strike? strike. Just strike. strike. He's called right? Strike. Like okay. an ex in bowling is a strike. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> That's oh, literally man. all I could think. I wish <laughs> why. that was his power was bowling, <laughs> evil <laughs> bowling. <laughs> I, I, like, now I wish there were bowling pins somewhere, or was, bowling jokes yeah. somewhere. But um, yeah. What what are our thoughts uh, on the villain in this? Like, I mean, he's not from another show, right? This guy's no, an original no. character. He's, he's so. only here as an excuse to get everyone together. And I kind of had hoped they had brought they would have used something like generically Cartoon Network, but I don't think they have that many of those characters. So okay. I hope that if we get another big crossover, they bring back Strike as like the Cartoon Network villain, if that makes sense. I, I, I thought I thought he was going to be revealing he going we were going to unmask him he's going to be just some crazed fanboy like <laughs> um, but, but, oh, man. yeah so, so a strike shows up and uh, you meant you used the word generic Justin and I think that he is kind of trying to just be generic villain but I mean That's he's a, not the, the point yeah he's not the point but like but they do manage to get some generic jokes out of him like at the end is like now time for my uninterruptible uh, transformation long, <laughs> power up yeah so mm-hmm. great <laughs> yeah so like uh, I, I i he didn't get too much play in this but like he serves his purpose and i think it's uh, he manages to be funny enough uh, at the end there um he's uh, voiced by Mike, michael dorn who also voices weasel for one moment in I this. Am weasel. Yeah, so. yeah 
Mm-hmm. Um, we, we can also talk a little bit about this, about the setting of this uh, episode. This uh, all takes place in an abandoned and destroyed uh, CN City, which is like a, a, a setting used in uh, Cartoon Network commercials from back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody has uh, fond memories of that, but... Uh, yep. Vague uh, memories. Yeah. I was like four. I yeah, vague, remember I don't that. know about fond, but vague memories for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I only know the one clip where like Johnny Bravo and Samurai Jack are like doing laundry or something, and it's, like they stare at each other shirtless. It's, so it's, it's interesting. Wait a minute, was Johnny Bravo in this one? Do we? Is he? Does he make an appearance in this one or no? I don't think he does. Um, he's, oh. he, there's a poster of him, but no, no statue. Oh, okay. Uh, spe- uh, statues, there are a lot of them. Um, I, don't, I guess we could take this moment to, like, if you want to gush over any particular yes, crossovers that stood out to you. Yay, Chowder! <laughs> chowder? Is that the Stuck out? I mean, yeah! I thought he existed. I'm going to hit the ones that most people don't know existed, like the really obscure yeah. stuff. You mean Alana Princess Alana? That's my excitement. I, I mean, I'll let I love you have that, because Octus was in here, too. But Octus Moxie... Where? From the Moxie show is in here, the very first Cartoon Network show ever, like original series they did. Whoa. So that was really important to slip in there. Here's that weird dog next to Weasel that no one knew. Um, <laughs> mm. Whatever happened to Robot Jones pops up twice in this episode, which means that someone on the crew like really liked that show. Mm-hmm. Um, Juniper Lee? Yes. Juniper Lee, Generator oh, yeah. Rex. They had to mention Fire Breather. They had to bring back Duncan from Fire Breather. That movie was not good. And I don't know if anyone actually remembered that. It's about this half dragon boy and it was CGI and it was not good. It's from 2010. Like mm. half of this made me excited and half of this was like bad decisions of shows I used to mm. watch. Mm, no, but, like there were some references in here. Like there were some of the shows that haven't even aired yet. Um, one, one from infinity train. I, I did see that one. No, uh, some camp uh, Island. <laughs> None of the yeah. campers. Uh, Hedgehog was there. Oh, okay. Um, Carl from Johnny Bravo was there. Number five, Victor from Victor and Valentino. They got Squirrel Boy in there. I was so proud they wow. snuck in Squirrel Boy. Sure. No, no problem notice. solvers. Yes, problem solvers. Um, oh, what's his name? What's his name? The <laughs> no one cared about problem solvers. I know, I know, but that's a, such an obscure hate show. No one really likes. It is. I can't remember which one, but yeah. Um. <laughs> Golly Gopher from Out of Jimmy's Head made it in. Oh. Um, Monkey from Dial M for Monkey slash Dexter's Lab. Um, Kelsey and Mortimer from Craig of the Creek with their own separate X's. What about oh, with the monkey from um, my Jim Parker? Jim yeah, Parker Jim monkey? Spider yeah. Monkey made it in. All oh, right. No Ginger um, Giraffe? No. My personal <laughs> favorite, though, Blastus from Robotomy snuck in there. Uh, there was a show called yeah, Robotomy? <laughs> Robotomy. Yeah, it's from show. the creators of Super Jail. It only ran 10 That's episodes, cool. making it officially the shortest running Cartoon Network original series. What's the name of the show again? Um, Robotomy. Robotomy. Well, I gotta look that up. And it's, it's quite interesting. Andy and I have thought about doing a podcast on it. That may happen at some point. <laughs> but then there were some from shows that have never aired in America. Uh, Jor-El from jor Brothers, which is from Brazil Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the, there's the guy from Villainous, right? Villainous, like, which uh, is yeah, coming to yeah, English yeah. soon. Mm. Like, it's, it's like to... <laughs> happening for sure. It's happening? Like... Something's happening. But then there's a lot of, like, references, not to necessarily shows, but there's graffiti all over the walls. Um, Cartoon Cartoon, Shorties, like, all of the blocks are referenced. Um, Har Har Thursdays is on one of the walls, which I don't know if you guys remember Har Har Thursdays. Mm. That was when no. Total Drama Island debuted. What was part oh, of Har wow. Har Thursdays? And it's then like 2006 or something. What about Fridays? Nothing from Fridays. We got into Fridays music, even I know. Oh. And then the most, my favorites, all of the nudes in this episode. Um, N O O D. This is this is a G rated. N O O D. The oh, nude was a character. That they had around 2008. It was the, you know, like the blank white little like vinyl pop figure looking things that were everywhere. Yeah. Like those were called nudes, N O O D S. What would happen is they would get hit with color blobs and turn in the characters from shows and they were on all the bumpers between stuff. I, we, I'm hoping to at least got a statue of Dee Dee, which, no, I, I, 
No, I, I vaguely remember this, but like it, it, when I was in Guatemala, they would the, the Spanish Cartoon Network would have those white dudes that they call them tunitses, I think they're called, and like that's they're the most also better, like it's most better than nudes. Yeah, yeah, nudes is a, is a bit of a questionable name. Uh, okay, you guys keep saying then, that. We're gonna get we're gonna get a higher rating here for <laughs> this podcast. I, that's why I spelled it, and of course, <laughs> who remembers who remembers the block Maguzi? No, I don't remember no. that. It used to air after school. Right around four to six PM every weekday, and it showed Canadian cartoons. So it was totally spies, code Leo. Oh, family. totally spies! Oh. Yes, and it was okay. hosted by this girl who hung out in an undersea lab with some weird aliens. And Aaron, the girl that hosted it, basically imagine teenage girl Tom from Toonami. That's Aaron. She has a statue in this. Oh, was she yeah. Canadian? All right, Canadian. This probably. There's just some. <laughs> obscure stuff like it made me so happy <laughs> that uh, leads I, me to ask like why do you guys think the ones that were chosen were the ones that were chosen just like did everyone in the crew get to pick like two to insert that had personal probably um, mm-hmm. things for them it yeah probably some they were told to do like i feel like one one and victor were probably like we want this show to continue we want this episode mm-hmm. to continue to have relevance in the next couple of years so oh. add in these upcoming shows, wow. but then some were probably just chosen um, by the crew. Well, wow. also, also, I think that like we mentioned, like it was shows that were uh, celebrated at the time, but also shows that have been since been reviled, like Problem Solver. So I wonder if it's also just a situation. Sure. It's like, well, we're celebrating Cartoon Network. We celebrate as much as possible. Like, uh, we did have all of history. Because are there really shows here that are left out? Any big shows? Um. The only shows I know were missed isn't technically Ninjago considered a Cartoon Network original. I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, I think it's Warner Brothers Legos. Yeah, it's but Teen yeah, Titans. It's like but, Ra- but Raven's in this, so who knows? Well, yeah, the original's left out, but it is referenced in the logo, so it's yeah. still there. As far I'm trying to think, I can actually well, can continue talking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Check. Yeah, but like uh, my my point is like yeah, I think that if there are no shows that are left out, that I think it it just ends up being like we're just trying to cover all of Cartoon Network heard, history, and so like, yeah. but I think maybe a choice of characters. But I think as far as I yeah, I think personal thing. I heard I think rumors. It's like it's like Foster's home in there. Is yes, Billy Frankie's Man in there. In there? Who's in there? Frankie's Who? in there. Um, from Foster's home. Now, um, who's not in there? Right. Who? No, not Blue. I wish. Well, he's no hero, so obviously he, he'd probably be more of a villain, but I love him anyway. But What about the Grim Adventures of Billy and um, Mandy? Is there any... Yes. Billy? Yes. Oh, Grim, 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 Grim's in the Major, other one. Major Dr. Gasly from Evil Concarne and Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy is in there behind Larry from Time Squad, actually. Oh, I recognized him. <laughs> also, we did get a Grim and... Uh, we got a Billy and Mandy poster. Okay, um, but I'm apple sorry. and onion is not represented to the best of my knowledge. Oh, okay. <laughs> over that's the garden bad. wall. Over the garden wall is in here yes, multiple yes, times. Yeah, the, the, the kid with the with the pot time. for a head. Oh, right? the kid with the like the mushroom. He has me. a pot on and his head because too. it's a Halloween costume of an elephant. <laughs> but also, there's only two characters with animals that the animal gets a separate X. It's Kelsey with Mortimer and then Greg with the frog that got a million different names, including George Washington. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love Over the Garden Wall. Yeah, so uh, I think we, we've established that there are a lot of obscure references here. Uh, also, I would like like to point out something we haven't really talked about. At the end, when uh, they they get their weapons back, uh, Ben turns into all of these heroes as well. Like he turns into people like Uncle Grandpa, and uh, I think I think he turns into Johnny Bravo at one point. Sure, I think um, he turned into all the Eds. All the Edge, and as well as Dexter Just double and D. Johnny Bravo. Yeah, Double D. And, and his finishing blows as Finn. But like the, my favorite part was like the music in the background. He yes. has, like the classic cartoon, da, cartoon da, theme. Da, like, da, da, yes. Cartoon, cartoon da, cartoons. Da. There are yes, uh, three missing. There's at uh, least three you, original shows missing. You counted three, okay. Okay, three list them. <laughs> we are missing. Um, Where they go? Secret Saturdays. Jack. Oh, oh okay. no, Knuckles is in there. We're good. We're missing okay, Secret okay. Saturdays. We are missing where to go, where to go, where to go. Class of 3000. Oh. And technically, the original Star Wars Clone Wars is a Cartoon Network original, and that's missing. Oh, that's probably understandable. That's probably a licensing issue, but Mixels is also missing. 
Uh, and by the way, the Secret Saturdays did do a crossover with, with Ben 10, so since Ben 10... But they're still guess, not here. Okay. <laughs> I tried to read the loophole. And how none of the live-action shows are here. No Annoying Orange, no no Dude What Would Happen, no Tower Prep, no Level well, Up. Well, I'm not complaining about that. You, yeah. Well, what, was, what, what, was, was there like a Destroy Build Destroy poster in the background? There should have been. <laughs> I wish there had. Andrew WK, just live-action jumping in there would have been fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, so they, they were almost complete. Like, they missed three, and I feel like even Class of 3000 may have been a rights issue. The only ones I can think, Secret Saturdays and Mixels, are the only weird ones to me. Mm-hmm. Like, they got in Problem Solvers. You could have added in Mixels if we're going with Reviled. Like, no one hated Mixels that much. Mm-hmm. But see, that's why problem solvers ends up being more important no. to include because it's a more <laughs> it's a more notable show for it. yeah. its uh, terribleness. Yeah, it's like it's like the Sanji and Craig or the uh, bread not bread, breadwinners yeah, bread of this network. Yeah, <laughs> just for yeah. vile shows. <laughs> Um, in addition to all these uh, minor references, like we have these uh, characters coming in from other shows, and we do get a, a couple of like references as well to them. Um, we we talked a little bit about Raven, like her mention of uh, of Beast Boy, and uh, like reference to like villains from the past. Uh, that there is the joke at the very end where she creates the portals, and the, it's, it has the classic yeah. Teen oh. Titans logo. Oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, close call. <laughs> like, oh. She switches it so great. That probably oh. hurt. That probably hurt some hearts. I part, I thought though Raven this episode she acted more like Raven from the original Teen Titans than Raven from Teen Titans Go. Though Raven and Teen Titans Go, I think she's definitely the more serious of the five. But that's just me. Mm-hmm. Um, also with uh, with Garnet, um, it, uh, uh, in the upcoming to this episode, like it was mentioned, I think on like uh, one of the official podcasts, that a, a quote unquote canon detail about Garnet was going to be revealed. And I think what it ended up being is that the Garnet's glasses get destroyed, and she explains that her glasses. Pres- yeah, first her glasses are prescription, yeah. but like also they give her clarity and focus for her future vision. Yeah, they like the funnel her future vision. Who prescribes them? Um, like I want to know. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, optometrist. I, yeah. I that's my new headcanon. Yeah. Well, I also are like, do gems have vision problems? <laughs> Which one's clear, Garnet? One, she or has two. two. She's three eyes. Maybe that makes it a little more complicated. One like, where does two. the third? Where oh. does the third eye focus? Oh, Garnet, yeah, she's in the future. <laughs> Oh, I could just see Garnet Gar- 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 going to a Tarantris, just like Aladdin 4. Just going to a Tarantris. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Is Aladdin 4 more obscure than any other Yeah, I've never heard of Aladdin 4. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a gag of Jafar going to a, a, <laughs> seeing an eye doctor. It's a family guy joke. Uh, also, okay. with, with Garnet, um, we, we do have a lot of uh, good uh, KO bonding scenes. Um, I think at some point she does say, like, okay, KO, let's be heroes. That was yeah, adorable! So oh, and I love how they, how they had, had the crossover names of the four shows, too. Um, okay, yeah, Ben 10, let's go universe! <laughs> that was a lot. It was and the, the, and the Ben and Raven give him zeros for that, but Garnet gives him a 10 because she's yeah. a great mom. <laughs> Um, Garnet's amazing. Like this episode just confirmed for me that like Garnet's just an amazing gem. Like uh, I need Garnet in my life. I need a Garnet. And and of course it concludes with like everyone leaving except Garnet at the very end. Like she creates the power card for Ko. They have a warm hug. Ko's crying. Like if, if, if considering their interactions throughout this episode, like that that ending did feel very earned. So it did. I, I, really, I really appreciated that like final goodbye sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now, is the is the Garnet Power Card going to show up ever again in this show, or like is it <laughs> something we forget? It might. I mean, KO yeah, is a show; it's open to anything. I feel like it really could. It could be a throwaway thing in the background, but it could happen. I both. Know. I see that happening, and I also see at some point Garnet like getting Stephen a headband. <laughs> like Aww. you remind me of someone. <laughs> like here, yeah. try this on. Are you sure about this Garnet? It looks great. <laughs> or like, or like she wins. She wins Stephen a KO plush from the arcade or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think we've covered most of the major stuff from from this episode. Any like f- like stuff we haven't uh, covered yet? Uh, new, new, like, new, the new. Story? Um, I tell you, yeah. oh, what, what, what? <laughs> I say okay, KO. Though it's this decade's like 
Cartoon Network's answer to Stitch, what Stitch was 10 years ago yeah. for Disney. Of all of the crossovers. Like, Lilo and Stitch did, like, four or five crossover episodes, and OKKO okay was very quickly hitting yeah. that number. Yeah, it pretty much connected all those universes, and that's what OKKO is doing right now. Connecting, so Steam Universe and Ben 10 is now canon, being part of the same universe. Well, well, they're different dimensions. Yeah, but kind of, you know. (laughs) You get this. They can cross over with interdimensional power. Like, it's not like they can go down the street. Yeah, yeah. The the the, uh, the real uh, thing is that now Raven has all the power to just invade any um <laughs> any show she feels like it, including the original Teen Titans. Cough, cough. Exactly. Oh man. Oh wait. I guess uh, now you said. I mean, right there, there's probably a Teen Titans Go episode that already does that, right? No, not <laughs> yet. But there's Teen Titans at the, the end of the movie. Spoilers allowed. Yeah, sure. Why not? Because <laughs> we all know so. by now that you know the line from the post credits is the original gang. I found a we found a way back. <laughs> Raven's portals in Go could be the way back. Ooh. That's true. <laughs> Fan theories on Teen Titans Go to the Movies here on the OK Kill podcast. It's a uh, crossover Michelle- episode. I'm here. Why am yeah. I here? <laughs> You're our expert. That's, That's why. That's special, yeah. Oh, I'm uh, special. Mich- Michelle, any final thoughts or things we haven't covered on, on this episode? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> A lot great, of things. The ending yeah. was very sentimental um, and very sweet. And I do think K.O. and Garner are the core of what makes that such a... Like, I was, I was trying to think, like, what makes this work the way the Steven, Uncle, Grandpa crossover so didn't? And I think them teaming up to have a common thing to defeat was a good idea. I think these four shows just work really well together. I don't know. I, like, I consider this episode, like, a win. This was not a subpar episode. And a lot of heart and very meticulous planning was clearly behind the team the whole way in constructing this. And, like, I can't fault them for that. It's really, it really is something. Uh, I, I agree. That, like, uh, the, the crossover, for all of its references, like, it still puts in a lot of work into, like, the actual character stuff and into making it exciting for someone who doesn't have those connections. And uh, so all the connections are, like, a bonus if you do get it. Yeah. But, like, it, it, the episode on its own, like, stands up really well and so it ends up being a really got, good episode. I got a question. Um, where, where do you rank, uh, compare this to? You think, is this better or worse than the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour? Oh, we can go. Like, are we gonna rank all crossovers in existence? Please at this no. Point? <laughs> uh, but uh, I think it's better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah. So now we can go over to the other um, crossover episode, Yay! Monster Party. Um, th- this uses characters from a 1988 uh, video- movie called uh, Scooby Doo and the Ghoul School. Do they appear anywhere else, or like, is this the only no? This is the so. only time they return. Yeah. Can I talk about what the original one was, please? Sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. Go so, for it. So, 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 summarize Scooby Doo and the Ghoul School for us better than Wikipedia can. <laughs> okay. So, actually. Two days after we're we're doing this, we're doing this on the 18th. The October 16th, 1988, was the release date uh, on TV. It was part of a series they did of straight to TV movies. So this year is actually the 30th anniversary, which is why I think they did this. But so basically, the whole movie is this is that era where Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy are doing a lot of weird, random stuff. Oh, and Shaggy had that red shirt. Yep, this is red shirt Shaggy era. So red they, shirt go, Shaggy era. they go. They go. It's only in the mid '80s, and then it comes back in Scooby Doo and the Cyber Chase. Um, so they go become gym teachers for a finishing school for girls, but it's actually Sha- Shaggy is a gym teacher is already unbelievable. But they're for <laughs> ghouls, and so oh, it's all teenage girl daughter, well, young girl to teenage girl daughters of famous monsters, yeah. especially Universal movies. It's essentially Monster High, only for younger characters. Yes, it's amazing. So um, they become the gym teachers. There's two main plots. There's the the big plot of there's this witch Revolta who wants to turn the girls into her mind slaves because they're like descendants of these strong, powerful monsters. And then there's the subplot of the volleyball game with the next door military academy. <laughs> oh, wow. Academy. Oh, oh, what a low stakes subplot compared to the. <laughs> the I school love is that. Loved by the great Miss Grimwood, who is like amazing and has a butler that's just an octopus, and okay. there's a spider that like makes the volleyball net, and 
it's just it's great. There's a floating hand. There's a little dragon named Matches, who I'm still sad didn't show up in this. Yeah, where's Matches? So the whole movie, <laughs> the stakes do pick up towards the end, but the whole movie feels very low stakes. It's um, very after school special. It's so great. It's um, so fun. Uh, it's just honestly, a- I never have hated Scrappy less than in this movie. Oh, he was very he's pretty good in these three movies, Scrappy. But let me ask you a question though. One thing I never got though. Dracula's in this, but there's another movie when he's the villain. So what happens? Is that the same guy or two different people? Because that's a quick jerk. Same Dracula. That's probably. But what a you jerk. Know. I mean, I wonder what um, Sh- what's her name? Sh- Shabella. Shabella would think what her dad did in that other movie. <laughs> so yeah, Shabella's so voice actress Elsa and um. Phantasma are all the original voice actresses. Oh, from can I talk about the voice actors? I know I have some info. I, I know um, Sabella, voiced by Susan Blue, and let me tell you, um, she is a gay voice actress, but she's one of the first ones to come out, so she's very uh, progressive, importance. Yay. And and Rusty Tyler, she has connection to us. She was the the voice of voice of Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby in the '87 Ducktales. And she's also the voice of Minnie Mouse. So, yeah, that's a big yeah, deal. She got around. And, wow. and, and you mentioned, Alice, the other one, um, Pat. Uh, uh, her, music? She, she's the, you said she's the mother of Mae Whitman, voice of Katara. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's the other so that, 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 Thanks for IMDb <laughs> trivia here. <laughs> well, the other two voice actors did not come back, unfortunately. So, Well, um, one of them's. No longer alive, so that okay. that, that uh-huh. kind of made that one. And uh-huh. the other ones retired, so they they replaced them fairly well. I well, think. Well, I but that's... Susan Blues retired mostly from active voice acting, so she came out of retirement. <laughs> but yeah, yeah like yeah. That, that, there's a, that's decisions. why they introduced Sabella, Elsa, and Phantasma a little more prominently. Yeah. Like, because mm. you can tell it's like one, two, three, and then and over there is Winnie hey, and Tan. <laughs> Yeah, that's very much how they're introduced. Because it's not the because those two aren't the original, so they're kind of trying to keep the voice down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. I, so I, I, I want to say that, like uh, I think it was the the, um, the the werewolf. She kind of sounded a little bit like Fink. I I did, forgot to check if this is the same. Voice no, that's actress, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's not, not okay. She, she sounded a little bit like Fink. But, it's um, actually current Buttercup, I believe. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> and then uh, Tannis is current Bubbles. Mm-hmm. Wow, they poached from Powerpuff Girls for this. <laughs> okay. Well, they oh, needed to grab some people quickly. Okay. So. Can, I just men- can I just mention how much young Enid is adorable in that flashback with the freckles and stuff? <laughs> yeah, so we, we can talk a little bit about the actual sh- uh, episode. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've covered the contents. But yeah, e- Enid <laughs> is apparently what well, well, we, we've covered earlier in the show. I'm just not, I actually haven't asked at this point. Are you caught up with the show? or uh, Some. Like, I catch okay. what I can. Okay, but like, so you so don't know. Bas- well, basically, Enid was a witch at one point, but she yeah, and, converted to a ninja. Um, <laughs> which is ironic, and, though. She wanted to be their witch, considering in the uh, Ghoul School movie, the villain is a witch. So I kind of wonder when that takes place. Well, there can be good witches and bad witches. Exactly. So I know. Uh, I know. I'm just saying. So, yes, yeah, so apparently, she, she went to this school and uh, eventually transferred to Lakewood Plaza Tur- Turbo. But they do have brief flashbacks where it's animated like the 80s mm-hmm. style, and like Enid mm-hmm. is also drawn in that. It's that so way. cute. Uh, and we have also. Cute. Also, Ed, Ed and Eddie are in this. Yeah. yeah that was like, so random, but I was very happy to see that <laughs> style again. They even had like the little trumpet sound that happens a lot in the, that show. It was very on point. Yeah, and like uh, the the one that's uh, drawn like Ed is like given the biggest close up. It is And Grim, like that's how that's how they knew that like. She was a ninja, not a witch. Is that she wasn't fawning over the Grim Reaper from Billy and Mandy? She was fawning oh, over yeah. ninjas. Oh, hot, hot ninjas! ninjas. <laughs> hot ninjas! Hot ninjas! Okay, yeah. can, can I also tell you guys something? What's going on in social media and the outside is since this thing has aired, suddenly these uh, Ghoul School characters are uh, they're turning all over Tumblr and over DeviantArt. They're like, before, yeah. I mean, this is like their sort of comeback. They're like. They're sort of afterthought before, so thanks, OKKO. Okay, you reminded us what awesome characters the Ghoul School Girls were. Well, well, Justin, like since you've actually watched the original material, like how close are these characters to how they appeared in the movie? Well, they they nailed it. Sabella's always like they got Sabella's catchphrase of "That's fantastic," yeah. which, 
catchphrase. That's all right. So since Susan Blue was in the show Fang Face, so <laughs> I actually I have this on VHS. I've actually copied it from my VHS. To, like I have kept my copy preserved digitally on my computer. I just rewatched it today. Like this movie means the world to me. I lit. This is gonna sound so sappy. I cried watching this episode because for the first time, like I felt like they were acknowledging my child. I told my mom this happened, and she got a little emotional. Like it. This made me so happy. Like hot take though. I think Scooby Doo and Ghoul Schools is the best of the Hanna Barbera. Superstar 10, even better than the Flintstones meets the Jetsons. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> of the 10, it is the best. I'd argue it's not the best special overall. I think Scooby-Doo Goes Hollywood is slightly higher. But that's not but... part of the Superstar 10 series. So. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. The you 10 and 10 Alex are like, cool. wow. This whole <laughs> yeah. other... This was so memorable. Like, I, I remember <laughs> watching this on TV. I remember finding this VHS at a thrift shop and being so happy. Like, this meant the world to me. And so at the end, in the credits, they have the, the original model sheets from 88 as the background. Oh, those, those were original. Those yeah, were the I, I original were, 88 model I, I thought sheets. they were drawings by the OKKO OK, 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 crew. Nope, okay, those were the original model sheets. Oh. Which, okay. Yeah, they nailed the characters, and they referenced the movie so well. Like the, volley, like, the fact that they play volleyball, that the games got weird. The only volleyball game we see... Um, they put a remote control in the volleyball. The net's made of spider web. Scooby Doo eats the remote and oh. hiccups the ball all over the place. Like their games are weird. And then the greatest line of all: Does anyone know what happened to that weird guy with the Great Dane? Yeah. yeah. Followed by he like <laughs> talks oh so weird, gosh. man. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, that's. I didn't get that too. I got really confused too. Do we? Get- I remember one of these three movies that Shaggy had a girlfriend, so I don't... Was this your one. girlfriend this? I know, I got a little confused at first, because I thought, wait a minute, she wasn't this one, that's who they're talking about? No, nah, no, nah, that was by Dane. How old is Enid? Someone who's up to date on... Okay, chaos. She's in his teenager, she's in high school. Between like 14 and 16, 16 yeah. somewhere in there. 30 yeah, years, I got, I got still a kid, dang. Because I had such a crush on Sabella, and I can no longer say that, I was hoping they were in college by now. Dang. Oh. Well, like, like how, how much time has actually passed? He's a vampire. Oh, <laughs> no, no. ages slowly. Like, as a kid, Sabella was like what made me interested in goth girls. Like, hot topic goth <laughs> girls. Uh, uh-uh, uh, give me Sabella. She, well, she's, she's very like, really- well, she's like the anim. She, I think she's intentionally, I guess, an animated like Elvira. I think they model her after that. Like yeah. the hair. The. Yeah. Do you guys even know who Elvira is? No. no. Wow, anyways, that's I'm moving so on. <laughs> Wow, what a condescending tone. We, okay, I'm, everyone's favorite girl school student is Minus Phantasma. She has the best hair, and I like her her peppy personality. Look, well, we, are, we like, haven't talked about Elsa enough. Elsa needs love. Like, she's cool. Is she your fave? Oh, I have a fave. I, th- I think she's my fave. Like, I, I, I like her, right? Yeah, there you go. I, I love the mummy one. Tannis. So, yeah, she's so adorable. Yeah. And it, it's really funny, since dope. the last episode we covered, like, we had a mummy in it, too. So, But I love them yeah. all. <laughs> Fantastic Very school, cute. too. I love Sabella, too, because I'm a... Sabella. Like I said, also doesn't help the fact she's voiced by Susan Blue, and I'm a big fan of her work. So, like I said, I... Can't you go wrong with the, any of these girls? There's no girl. There's no no girls. Ghoul school girl. I don't like so. Um, all right. I can explain the ending because I know you guys were really probably confused by that. Why Rad started rapping? Well, is it just like a, well? At, at least on school. on the surface, it reads like a thriller parody, basically, right? Like they're doing it, a thriller it style is, dance. It is that, but also in the original, the end of the movie is Scrappy doing a Scrappy rap. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like oh a did you know? Idea. Do you know the voice of uh, Sabella is also the voice of F- Flint Flam for Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo? Speaking of okay, that, thanks. Were uh, those keep... ghosts a reference to the Boo Brothers, or was that a the, the like? I the think so. The Boo Brothers. They don't know. Have you seen them? They've been in a past episode and went to eat in his house, but they do remind me of them. Because like two random yeah, ghosts actually, popped these up. These are characters that already existed in the show. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Although I did, I, it did take me like the second watch. So like, oh yeah, those guys have appeared before. <laughs> it's been a while since we saw them, but uh, yeah. If there's, uh, yeah. One, if there's one thing I don't like about this episode is that they didn't bring along Matches, the little dragon, who was like, yeah. like if there was one thing I wish they had added, it would be Matches. But <laughs> I think they did a really, really great job with this. I forgot. Maybe they didn't have time because I'm sure Kale would be great place to have like magical pets, like. 
KO, KO could have done matches so, so yeah. much. I know they could have done. He could have played in the background while Edie was having her scene with her her gook school friends. Now we we haven't really talked about the the OK KO characters in this episode. Like uh, f- first of all, there's there's Rad who appears from the very beginning. Like uh, Enid is just Rad. like chatting with him th- throughout. Never take advice um, from Rad. Yeah, yeah, I never take advice from Rad. I, I I really like the the image of like Rad digging a hole in her brain and like, planting a seed of doubt. Seed of planting a seed of doubt. Yes, that was a good so visual. great. That's a great image. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like I should have seen that before, and it, it's funny that it's actually appeared now. Uh, also, like, uh, KO later is like, you heck things up again. It's just, like, cutting to Rad in jail. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't... Have, yeah, what was happening to Rad? Well, he was well, underwater, you, he went to jail, he was well, dancing. Well, I, you should not take advice from someone who got themselves turned into a burger. So, that's on Eden. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, at the very end, he is performing the rap. But yeah, just like Rad, Rad I, I, I just like in this episode, I really like him. I think that this uses Rad the best of like OKKO OK episodes in terms of like Rad just being sprinkled in, but not being a main character. I think he does better when he's just like a side gag character like yeah. this. As, I, I don't know how, I, how you guys. I've only about that. the only time I've really like seen Rad is the episode where Rad and Ina do a delivery together, and like Rad was me because I grew up with very teasing friends. So like I have a soft spot for Rad. Maybe if I saw the rest of the show, I wouldn't. But mm-hmm. for now, I agree that that, that, that one is one of the better Rad and episodes. Just have okay. the macho well, this episode shows that Ina definitely lived a very interesting life. Like. <laughs> You go from her parents, from going to ghoul school, from her little expertise with Elodie, to going to the point prep. Like, so well, much stuff well, has happened. Well, well, we've got her parents here, too. Yeah. They, they, haven't, they haven't shown up in a bit. I, I think the only notable thing is at the very end, where, like, Enid's dad, we, we finally see that he, his reverse werewolfness is that he transforms into a purple He's hideous. Human. He's a really man. hot purple-haired human. Gorgeous. He's like shamed by his body. It's, and it's, 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 it's hilarious. It's like Munster logic. It's like the Munster's logic. I don't know if you ever saw that show when they had they had this uh this niece who looked like normal and very attractive to us, but for them, like, very ugly. And that's what it reminded me of. <laughs> His eyelashes were quite incredible. Yes. Oh, yeah. And it's whole Beauty and the Beast transformation sequence was just, like, so funny. I loved it. And and then the uh, the wife just comes out like put a bag over oh, his head no. and, like carries him. Oh out. yeah, carries like an enemy character. Like who are Icky and Boris? I was confused. Uh, I think. Well, are they Enid's brothers or step siblings? I, I, are I they related to her? That. I thought they were like butlers, maybe. Okay, so they, they are characters. I don't know. They, they did related to her family somehow. Yeah, yeah we, we've we've had one episode at Enid's house before this, which yeah, introduced her par- her well, parents. Wasn't that last year's the, Halloween the, episode? The, kids, the ghost. Yeah, yeah, I guess it was last year's Halloween episode. Enid, did. We already she, had this yeah. arc. Yeah, but that's not that arc. I think the arc was the point prep arc. Was that a- well, yeah, like uh, speaking more big term, like this episode, the basic mm. story is that Enid is trying to pretend to be something she's not, uh, and like we we have had that kind of story with Enid before, so that that uh, if that that joke is probably well, oh, wait a minute, that probably was the Elodie's debut episode. Was that? I'm trying to remember. No, no, Elodie is separate from the Halloween episode. No, no, I'm talking uh, about the whole Enid trying to be something that she's not. Well, that, uh, okay, yeah. That was the last Halloween episode because it was her not telling her parents that she wasn't actually a ninja now. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, so sport. Enid has done this a bunch of times, and <laughs> she's doing yeah, it again. She's still <laughs> insecure about her identity. Hmm. Yeah, but but in in the end, like the the ghouls are very supportive of her. They're like, we already knew, and yeah. the, they the, saw the max. Yeah, there's a quick action sequence where, like, Enid karate kicks uh, the tree and burnt, uh, puts it on fire and stuff, and they all have fun, and the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so uh, all in all, I think that this is a, a cute episode. Like, the uh, the ghouls are themselves very cute. <laughs> they, they, yeah. um, they have nice chemistry with Enid. Uh, like, it, it, it's strange that, like, Enid, for not for being away from them for so long, but, like, they're st- they still, all, in the end act like very good uh, friends with each other so that that was nice i wonder if we're gonna see them come back and maybe they can meet uh red action and elodie and just all the union's friends like 
do something. <laughs> They Just are very nice, coffee. and like I'm glad they kept them as nice instead of making them mean girls because they are all genuinely yeah. sweet characters in the original. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they, like these are that's true actually. Like these are all these are all like kind of the tropes of like mean girl groups, sort of like you got the the cool vampire, you got like the the teen the Franken teen kind of girl. I don't know. Like I I think you're right that this could have easily been manipulated into becoming a mean girls type situation, but the fact that it's all very wholesome, like it just adds to the mm-hmm. ass, uh, comfy. Yeah, they could have been like the Monster High girls in a way, <laughs> but they were sweet. Yeah. I, I especially love, like I said, like Phantasm. I I love that name, and she, and it's hard hard for Minnie Mouse to be mean. So what can you say? <laughs> oh, and, and the 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 end of this episode just ends with the moon shrugging. Happy Halloween! Like, it's like yeah, maybe because we don't have maybe because like did Halloween last year. So like, how how is time passing? Okay, Ko. Like <laughs> that's a big or, or the moon is just very confused at what just happened on Earth. Like the ghouls attacked a dancing tree. Mm-hmm. I, uh, they, for the record, I really liked the dancing tree and the music that went with him, and how he just started partying really hard when she couldn't stop him oh, with magic. Oh, I, I did like the close up on Winnie and Tannis getting bumped around inside. Yeah, the tree. <laughs> like, yeah. I always. R.I.P. I, I don't just know how you feel. I always wonder maybe in time maybe uh, one of the ghouls. School school girls maybe could have dated like one of the military boys. Do you ever think of that? I mean, if we want to get up into my Scooby Doo head cannons ships, like we'll be here another hour. But like okay. probably, probably I open a Pandora's box. I don't want to open. Please don't. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Be, 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 before we continue our descent into madness, I think we'll begin wrapping up here. I'm on the but, podcast. Uh, yeah. You knew what would happen. <laughs> I, I, hey, I, I think I've done a very good job of controlling this situation. You did a great from crossing, job. From crossing over into other dimensions, if, okay? If it so. wasn't for Justin, okay, this podcast yeah, would have been over 30 minutes ago. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Again, with the condescending oh. attitude. Is this how it always is on the OKKO okay podcast? <laughs> No, 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 it's then, great. It's all I'm great. Happy, we're happy you're here. I just no, yeah, we're happy. Well, normally our pa- well, our, our OK OK no, podcasts no. are very quick because well, well, look, look the, the, this show, especially these two episodes, I, I think, as this is part of my final thoughts, I think that this these two episodes embody that OK Ko is a very comfy show. It's a very nice, wholesome show. It but is. sometimes, like us, in our desire to like be different, like we we react in. Uh, bad ways but like we should be taking lessons of being nice to people around us new, new newcomers that maybe we haven't seen for a long time just as the ghouls were nice to eat it so. <laughs> all right there you go lessons to live by yep yeah yeah um, anyways um uh S- steve any final thoughts uh, on these two episodes oh i love them um even though there's no dendy but i think uh i think a ghoul school girl's made up for her absence with their cuteness so once again, okay. we do have a Dendi uh, substitute for cuteness, so... <laughs> but come back, Dendi! Please, come back! We miss you. Okay. Uh, Michelle, final thoughts? I love the dancing tree. I love Phantasma. I, I didn't know that the ghoul school was referencing anything, so it was really cool to hear the backstory from Justin. And I'm, I feel like I'm being won over into wanting to do a podcast on whatever that movie was itself. Oh, we got <laughs> it. That's do that. amazing. I'd be happy to, and Delaney to would be movie. right there with us. Can you find a copy okay, of that? Okay, awesome. Can you, I, I can't, I'm sure I can find, find it online somewhere. Yeah. I, lo- I will give I you lo- my legal copy so that none of us does anything bad. Yay. <laughs> that, that, thank you for putting that on the record, uh, Justin. Thank you very much. Oh, Anyways, and, and uh, Michelle, J- Justin, uh, your final thoughts on these two episodes? Um, Thank you guys for le- letting me be here. And I think if there's any takeaway from this, it's that um, we're in such a great era of animation where the people who grew up on early Cartoon Network are now creating television. And so just as the 80s saw a lot of references to the 50s of television, we're seeing my childhood and just before that being referenced now. And I think it's such a great time of animation. And if you're someone now who loves cartoons, you can grow up one day and talk about your favorite shows and like put them in your own cartoon like this. And I think it's just so inspiring. And if you haven't seen the original Ghoul School, please watch it. Like it's the 30th anniversary. Now is a great time. It's right around Halloween. Go, go check it out. I think it's severely underrated and it's just like this episode, very, very wholesome. You will have a smile the entire time. So go 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 enjoy it. 
Aww. Okay, th- 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 thank you very much. And hopefully this podcast put a smile on your face, listener. Hopefully. Um, if it did, um, you can always uh, find more about our podcast at overtheanimated.com. Um, you can chat with us directly on Discord at overtheanimated.com slash Discord if you want to talk to us about OKKO OK or give us recommendations, maybe tell us stuff we missed, uh, any- anything you want to talk about. Uh, you can also support us financially via Patreon at patreon.com slash overtheanimated. And thanks to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Danny, a.k.a. Danny Phantom. Uh, thanks, as always, to our Patreon executive producers, John, Ryan, Stephen, Hugh. Um, besides uh, OKKO, OK we, we cover a lot of other shows. We have a Miraculous Ladybug coming out yeah. recently. Um, we'll pro- we nope. might have other shows that's to Duck cover. DuckTales coming back. DuckTales is coming back soon. That's true. Uh, yeah. Voltron has a date. Woo. What do you think, Michelle, though, the fact that Phantasm was the, was the, one, the voice of Red Shirt, Blue Shirt, and Green Shirt? I think that's crazy. <laughs> and Webby. Cool. And Webby as well. <laughs> Yeah, that's quite a range. I think that's pretty impressive to make four of those distinctive, for sure. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I feel like I've seen clips and they weren't that distinctive. They weren't. So, you know. But, uh, <laughs> oh, no! I take it back. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so um, DuckTales, we do have a date. Okay, KO, I don't believe we have dates for future Probably episodes. Probably not till so next year. No. Unless we have a Christmas episode. Maybe. Uh, who, you never know. You never know. But uh, until we get new OKKO OK episodes, when, whenever that happens, we'll be around to talk about them. But until then, thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Adios. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.